taking apart that Darth Vader trash bin black T-Mobile home internet. Uh, I'm going to put it in an outdoor enclosure. You already know I got one coming from the wireless haven. Uh, this time I might use the large one or I might use the small one. I got a spare small one that um, that I never really put anything any use to it. So I might use that one. I'm going to keep it nice and short because uh, at the end of the day, it's only about a bunch of Phillips screws. I'm going to go over the tools needed in order to take this device apart. There's two items you need, technically three, because I did use a, uh, a eight millimeter um, wrench. But uh, you can see it in the video. Um, you know, I'm, this is what I do for a living. So there are some tricks in there. I'm going to try and cover the tricks. So that way you can take it apart yourself. Add four antennas to the unit. Um, I don't recommend cheap Amazon antennas. And I, there's a couple websites up there selling cheap antennas with shitty cables. Uh, I use LMR 400 with the very best antennas with the best guts. Because at the end of the day, I need all the speeds. For best results, place near a window. Four foam pads on the bottom, which will uncover four Phillips screws. In order to remove the top lid, I'm using a plastic spudger, which is uh, my favorite phone repair tool. Um, use it a lot on iPads, for example. The tabs are a little tight, but they pretty much snap off. And then uh, there's four total. Um, I used an eight millimeter wrench just to get a little bit more leverage. I am a car nut too, so those are always around. Once you uh, separate the, pretty much separate the, uh, the little tabs, that top lid's gonna fall right out. So once you go to separate the housing, um, this is kind of how I can show that this is my favorite tool because you can separate plastic with it. It's plastic on plastic. You're not going to break any tabs. All these tools are nickel and dime, like we're talking maybe five, five bucks each. You can probably get like the plastic spudgers, I think a five pack for like six dollars. I said some moles are like four dollars. Uh, you just got to wedge it in there. You're not really prying. You're more like creating space. And as you create that space, the tabs start to separate a little bit. But, you know, this is technically not something that I own. You know, it was provided for free for the service. So I kind of want to save the plastic, you know. Once you've got one side slightly separated, you move on to the other side and it just comes right off. It's pretty, uh, separates pretty quick. Now the, uh, there's two Phillips screws at the very top. I didn't realize that they would be holding the two sides together, but once you take those off, everything pretty much comes in into three separate pieces. So you gotta have the, the LCD section the back part and the board on the inside. Now this is something Apple employs on a lot of phones, hidden screws behind stickers. Love it. Once you remove that last Phillips, you're able to extract the full board and separate it from the housing. In order to get this into an outdoor enclosure, we have to remove a ton of plastic. Since it's a sandwich board, you just have to go after all the screws. That'll give you a little bit of separation. I'm fast forwarding through all of this because at the end of the day, we're just removing full of screws. There's nothing, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no special load in removing the screws. You just gotta remove as many as you see. Um, I counted maybe about 20. Now 
the goal is to remove the top pieces because they take up way too much space. I'm trying to extract the board, so all that I have left is um, the two boards, the top, the bottom, and the two large heat sinks, which will give me plenty of clearance to install it into the outdoor enclosure. So again, everything is a sandwich board, so in order to remove these top and bottom pieces, you just gotta create a little bit of separation on the board. And the only way to create the separation is to continuously remove the rest of the screws. Then in order to remove the top section, which holds, which holds the antenna array, you have to, again, keep removing the screws until you create just a little bit of separation. Um, obviously, we're not going to put the LCD. We're not going to keep the uh, the buttons because everything is kind of not necessary when we're going into an enclosure. So again, once you remove all those all those uh, Phillips screws that you found all across the board, um, you can remove the antenna array. So you're going to have to create just a little bit of space so that you can remove it. And then you're going to want to disconnect every single connector that you find. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS. And then finally, you're going to remove the antenna arrays. And there's two that are not in use. You want to remove your button section. That kind of falls right out, revealing that last Phillips there. That's going to allow you to remove the LCD. Keep your LCD nice and clean. Try not to touch it with your tool. You don't want to scuff it, damage it. It's kind of sensitive. But you got to be real careful here because the ribbon cable for the LCD is right beneath the LCD. And it is connected to the board. You can just uh, pull that out. It'll unplug. Just got to be real gentle not to pull or rip. It's like paper thin. The button section has a little black tab. Just lift it up. Lift it up a little bit and it'll come right out. And now we're left with a full, empty, plasticless board. Now y'all stay tuned for the next episode when I'll be testing a PoE splitter um, that I found it has USB-C and should provide enough juice because this unit is 15 volts.